need you more. We're glad we're able to come to you live this morning. Once again, if you're listening, please just drop a message. Say, hey, I'm here. So Sister Steph and everybody knows back there that somebody is listening. But we're here this morning to let you give you some good news. Jesus is alive and well Amen. and has everything under control. And we're here today to celebrate Easter Sunday. They say that uh, you haven't lived until you tried something new. So we're trying something new. A lot of churches are trying something new, but together we're still sending the message out that Jesus is alive and well 
and that he's working and moving in our world today. Let's just open in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you today that we could gather together in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we know we're spread out all across this country, all across this world. But Lord, your church today is still celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we rejoice today because we know you are alive, you are moving, you are working, and we give you praise, honor, and glory today. And we just ask that your presence would fill each home, would fill each life today in a special way, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. He's alive again. So the roadway. He's alive. We're glad to.
Amen. We're glad that he lives today and he's living within our hearts today. And this next song we're going to sing is an older one, but has a great message. Gone, the stone is rolled back. Amen. And he's gone, sitting at the right hand of the Father, and he lives forevermore. <laughs> Mary came unto the tomb of Jesus. The stone was moved, and he had gone away. The angel said, fear not, I know who seek me, for he has risen this shield in And he's gone today. He's set up, seated at the right hand of the Father today, making intercession for you and me today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that you give us life. 
a life more abundantly. Are you trusting Jesus all along the way? Does he grow more precious to your heart each day? Are you his disciple? Test his word and see. And he will grant the spirit more abundantly. Oh, more abundantly, more abundantly. That we might have life and more abundantly. Oh, more abundantly, more abundantly. That we might have life and more abundantly. Oh, more abundantly, more abundantly. That we might have life and more abundantly. More abundantly, more abundantly. That we might have life and more abundantly. Oh, more abundantly, more abundantly. That we might have life and more abundantly. More abundantly, more abundantly. That we might have life and more abundantly. Thank God that we have life today, amen. And we can live it to the full through Jesus Christ today, amen. Sing one more song out of the hymnal, Christ the Lord is risen today, amen. Christ the Lord is risen today, hallelujah. Sons of men and angels sing, hallelujah. Raise your joy and triumph high, hallelujah. See Best of announcements. Good morning and happy Easter to everyone out there. Uh, as we just go to the Lord in prayer this morning, uh, we have a few needs that have come in this week. Uh, one that uh, came this morning, uh, we want to lift up a young man uh, named Sean. Uh, just pray for him and uh, needs. God knows the situation there. Continue to remember J.J. Moore in prayer. Uh, this is the 14-year-old great-nephew of Brother Floyd. Uh, he had a brain tumor removed a couple weeks ago. He's on a ventilator, and he's still in the hospital and needs a touch. Uh, so we want to lift up this young boy and his family in prayer this morning. Continue to remember uh, Sister Joyce Everhart in prayer. Uh, she's been battling a cough and sinuses and sickness for a couple of weeks. So we want to pray for healing and a touch in her body. Continue to lift up Brother Wayne in prayer as well. And also for uh, Sister Karen Burroughs' brother, uh, Johnny Mahoney, uh, had to be uh, airlifted to the hospital this week, was throwing up blood, and he's bleeding internally, and they're not sure where. Uh, so we want to lift up uh, Johnny, Karen, that family in prayer this morning. Uh, we do want to continue to pray for our country, our nation today, our leaders. Continue to pray for our church. You know, as we continue to um, just live out the uncertainties of this life, we're, you know, we take it one day at a time through... Um, this valley that we're walking through that we're facing in our lives and we still know that God is in control in the midst of it all. Uh, continue to pray for those that are on our church 
uh, prayer list, our bulletin list. Continue to add those names. Um, these names that I've mentioned this morning, add those to that prayer list that was mailed to you this week. Uh, and continue to pray throughout the week as you're at home. You know, one thing that you know I've come to realize is we may not be able to gather in the church as much or at all um, during this time, but we can uh, still pray at home. We can still worship at home, uh, in our cars, at work, wherever we are. We can still pray. We can still worship. We can still seek God. We don't have to be in a church building to, to do that. God's with us wherever we are. And this morning, as we celebrate our risen Savior, you know, something that we shouldn't just celebrate one Sunday a year, but something that every day we wake up, you know, we, we should celebrate and recognize that Jesus is alive today. You know, every day we, we breathe, every day we walk, we talk, we have good health. You know, we're blessed. God's faithful to each and every one of us. And I just want to share a scripture this morning um, from Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. It says, Surely he has borne our griefs, he's carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. You know, as we pray this morning, you know, every need that you might have, every situation that you and your family might be walking through or facing, you know, all of that was paid for on the cross over 2,000 years ago. And every stripe that Jesus took on his body, you know, he gives us that healing that we can have in our body. Say, if you need a physical touch, if you need a, a spiritual touch in your body today. So let's just pray together this morning, you know, on this Easter Sunday that whatever needs you have, that God is able to touch you, to bless you, to strengthen you, to encourage you. You know, whatever, wherever you are in your walk uh, with the Lord, that he's there with you uh, this morning. He's no longer in the grave. He's no longer in the tomb, but he's alive today. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just thank you once again that we can uh, just join together this morning through live streaming, through Facebook. And God, we just thank you that uh, you are here with us, Father God. Who would ever imagine that an Easter Sunday would be uh, where the churches are empty, but God, you're still in control, you're still alive, and God, you're still with us, God, as those that may be in their homes today, God, or wherever they may be as they, you know, are watching this live streaming, we just pray, God, that your, your presence and your spirit would just be with them in a great and mighty way, with their families, with their households today, God, that you would just touch them and comfort them, strengthen them, Father God, as we just continue to go through the uncertainties of this life, God, we know that you're still with us, God, that you haven't left us, you haven't forsaken us, God, but you're still right there by our side, and we thank you and we praise you for that this morning. And God, as we just lift these needs that I've mentioned, Father God, we lift up this young man, Sean, to you in prayer, Father God. You know the need, the situation there. We pray, God, that you just minister, Father God, to uh, Sean today. We pray that you just pour out, Father God, and just continue to strengthen and encourage him today, God. We lift up uh, this 14-year-old J.J. Moore, Father God, who's been through a battle the last few weeks. And we pray, God, that you just continue to touch this young boy today, Father God. He's there in the hospital. Just minister, Father God, in a great and mighty way. Father God, you are still the healer. God, you still perform miracles. You still touch hearts. You still touch lives. You still answer prayers today. And we ask, God, that you just minister to this young boy, his family today. Continue just to comfort them, strengthen them, and encourage them, Father God. We lift up Sister Karen's uh, brother today, Johnny. We ask God that you just touch his body today, Father God, as he's uh, bleeding internally, God, and the doctors are still trying to figure everything out. We pray, God, that you just minister, Father God, to Johnny today. Strengthen him, encourage him, Father God, and just give him the healing touch that he needs today. Be with Sister Karen, God, and her family, Father God, as they continue just to walk alongside their uh, brother today. We pray that you just comfort them, strengthen them today. Uh, we lift up Joyce Everhart to you in prayer, Father God, who's continuing to battle this sickness, this cough and sinuses that she's been dealing with. We pray, God, that you would just touch her, Father God. We pray that you just get rid of this cough, get rid of this sickness and sinuses that she's been having. And God, that you would give her the full healing touch that she needs today. God, continue to be with Brother Wayne as well. Give him the strength that he needs for every day, God, and just continue to encourage him. And just be with him, Father God, and be with their families today as well. God, we continue to lift up our church family in prayer, those that are on our prayer list, our bulletin list.
longer in the tomb, but God, you're here in our midst. God, touching us, strengthening us, and encouraging us each and every day. We pray your blessings upon the rest of our service this morning. God, bless your people today as well in this week. And God, just continue to comfort and strengthen and uh, just to lift up one another today. And we thank you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. This time, Brother Amory is coming to sing for us. <coughs>
hopefully every week it's improving and we're getting better every week and uh, hopefully more importantly we're getting the message out there so that people will know that Jesus is alive and well. Amen. This morning I'd like to turn our attention to Matthew chapter 28. It says, After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead, and he's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. Then came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today that we know that you're here with us. We thank you today. We know that you're touching hearts, you're touching lives. And Lord, we thank you today once again that all across this world that the message of Easter is going forward, reminding people that Jesus is the risen Lord. And Lord, today as we look into your word once again, we ask that you would anoint our hearts, anoint my lips, and Father, that you would speak to us in a special way, we pray, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You know, as we think about the resurrection, we understand that the resurrection was God's stamp of approval on Jesus dying on the cross. Because the Apostle Paul said, if Jesus had not been resurrected from the dead, all of our faith would be in vain. But today, because of the resurrection, we know that our faith is true, it's valid, it's in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And the resurrection also showed us that it fulfilled God's plan for redemption. Ever since Adam and Eve had fallen in the garden, God had a plan to bring redemption into the world. And through the cross and through the resurrection, we see that plan brought to pass. With the sacrificial lamb being offered up, it demonstrated, it is finished, that the power of sin had been destroyed. The power that had held mankind in its grip was now broken because of what Jesus did on the cross and because of the resurrection. And we also know that because of the resurrection, that the power of the enemy had been destroyed. He has been defeated. As the Bible said back in Genesis, his heel has bruised his head. Satan is a defeated foe today because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. If Jesus had not come out of the tomb, he would have been another teacher. He would have been another prophet. He would have been another man. But Jesus came out of the tomb which shows to us that He is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He is all that He claimed to be, and He can do all that the Bible tells us He's able to do. And because of the cross today and the resurrection, we are saved, we are forgiven, we're redeemed, and we are headed to heaven. And we're assured of all the blessings this life has and the life to come. And because of the resurrection, we enjoy peace with God, and we also enjoy the peace of God. And we know today that the resurrection sealed the deal. I like that. The resurrection was kind of God saying, it's approved. It's got my stamp on it. Everything's good because Jesus Christ came up out of that tomb. And we find out in the Bible, that's what I really want to share with you today, is that Jesus in his initial appearance with his, with his followers and with his disciples, as we read in the passage of Matthew that we just read, that Jesus showed showed that the resurrection power assures us of our salvation. But it also reveals that the power of God 
is still available in our hearts and lives today. And that same power that raised Jesus from the dead is still working in our hearts and lives this very day. Thank God that what the, by the resurrection it released the Holy Spirit to come into our hearts and lives to give us what we need to serve Jesus Christ. He didn't leave us on our own, but He sent the Holy Spirit and He sent the Comforter. And what we discover in the appearances of Jesus that Jesus came back from the dead to, because of His love and compassion for His followers. He didn't leave them alone. See, I, what, what amazes me about Jesus, Jesus could have died ascended to heaven, end of the story. But Jesus didn't do that. Instead, before he ascended back to heaven, he came and made himself known to his followers and to his disciples. He wanted them to see in person that I am alive, I am well, I am who I said I am. He wanted them to have that assurance and that confidence to live in their lives. And you notice here in the midst, in this story that I just read, these, these disciples of Jesus and these followers of Jesus, they're feeling lonely, they're feeling afraid, they're uncertain of the future, they're uncertain of what's going to happen in their lives. They had counted on Jesus to be a ruler, they counted on Jesus to be king, and all of the three years they spent. story right here. The angel has already talked to them, to the women. The angel's already told them, don't be afraid. The angel's already told them, he's not dead, he's risen. But then they leave from there, and the Bible says they're filled with joy, yet afraid. And all of a sudden, as they're walking down the road, one of my favorite Bible uh, uh, words, suddenly. I like that word, suddenly. And yet, it, to God, it's not suddenly. To us, it is. Because so many times we pray for things, we believe things, we ask for things, it doesn't happen. And then we say, suddenly. Well, to God, it's not sudden. God is in His time, it's in His plan, it's in His purpose. But here the Scripture tells us that suddenly, I like that, suddenly in the midst of their confusion, in the midst of their chaos, in the midst of their mourning, suddenly Jesus shows up. And you notice here it says, suddenly Jesus met them. How many know he was waiting for them? Huh? How many know in our lives today he's waiting for us? He's just waiting for us to turn to him, to focus our attention on him. And all of a sudden he's going to show us that in the midst of our confusion, in the midst of all the chaos that's going around us, Jesus is trying to say to his church and to his people, hey folks, yeah, there's a virus running around, but I want you to know something. I'm in your midst. I want you to know that I'm with you, that my hand is upon you. I want you to know that your life isn't determined by this virus. Your life is determined by the fact that I am the Christ, the risen Lord, that's alive and well. And Jesus wants us to know in the midst of it all, he wants to show up. And I like that. He makes his presence known. Say, preach, how does he do that? Notice what he says. Suddenly Jesus met them. He says, greetings. Huh? Have you ever walked into a room to somebody and say, hey, I'm here. Huh? Here I am. And, 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 and I kind of get that feeling here with Jesus as, I'm going to preach like there's a church full today. But anyway, Jesus all of a sudden shows up and says, hey, I'm here. It's me. And all of a sudden, he's got their attention. How many know he wants our attention? And once he gets our attention, then he can reveal himself to us. But right here he says to them, here I am. And I, and I underscore, here I am. Am because the Bible said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I am the bread of life. I am the fountain. I am all that you need, Jesus said. And Jesus said, Hey, ladies, I am here. 
And wherever you are this morning, and if you're listening to my voice, I want you to hear something. Jesus is saying to you that in the midst of your confusion, in the midst of your difficulties, in the midst of your storm, in the midst of your problem, Jesus is saying, hey, I'm here. Don't forget me. Hallelujah. And I want you to notice here with, with, with these ladies here, Jesus is also kind of saying to them, remember me? Hey, do you remember me? How many times in our lives do we go about living our lives and we forget about Jesus? We forget about what he said to us. We forget about what he's promised to us. And even here with these ladies, I want you to understand, they did not hear what Jesus said when he taught and he said, I will destroy this temple and in three days I'm going to raise it up. He also said to them, he said, in Luke it said, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men. He must be crucified and on the third day be raised again. They forgot those words. They didn't hear that when Jesus spoke that. How many times in our lives we're in a situation we're in because we haven't remembered the words that God has spoken to us. We haven't remembered the promises of God. We haven't remembered that we're servants of the Most High God, that Jesus is our Savior, that He's our Lord, that He's risen from the dead, and everything that He's promised is available to us. We don't have to walk in fear. He wanted them to know that He's still with them. And can I say to us, Jesus is saying to us, I'm with you. I don't know where this world's going, and I hear a lot of talk with the stuff that's going on. I'm not worried about what the world's doing, because his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he's watching me. His hand is with me. His hand is upon me, and I know every step I take, Jesus is with me. Even like when Peter and them were out on the boat that night and a storm was there. And Peter looks, he says, there's Jesus. I want to say to you this morning, church, there's Jesus. He is with you no matter what you're walking through. And not only is he with you, in the midst of the confusion, notice what he says to them. He says, do not be afraid. How many understand that fear is a killer? Fear is a destroyer. Fear is something that eats away at us on the inside. And if the devil had his way, he would have every one of us wrapped up, tied up in fear so that we don't do this and we don't do that and so that we're no good to the kingdom of God. But Jesus knew for his disciples and his followers here, he knew that they were, they were in a place where they shouldn't be. So he says to them, don't be afraid. Now notice, the angel says it to them, and Jesus says it to them. They were in mourning. They were in sorrow. They were upset. They, they, they didn't understand what was happening. And everything around them had fallen apart. They were in shock, and they were in panic. Jesus wanted them to know something, though. Folks, I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. And Jesus wanted them to know that it was all the circumstances that happened in the last three days. Can, can you just imagine the look on those ladies' face when they meet Jesus and he puts out his hands, they see the nail prints, they see the scars, and when the light finally dawns, this is Jesus. He is here with me. You know, there's something supernatural about that. That when all of a sudden we finally get that revelation that in the midst of my storm, Jesus is with me. In the midst of my storm, I don't have to be afraid of debt collectors. I don't have to be afraid of what the doctors say. I don't have to be afraid of what newscasters are saying. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy on Jesus name I don't have to be afraid I don't have to be worried about it my hand is in the hand of the man from Galilee and I choose to trust in him oh hallelujah and if, if just think what would happen if they had only understood the teachings of Jesus before the crucifixion just think well how it would have been different had they grasped what he was saying to them but they missed it 
Hold on to your seats. What would happen in our lives if we truly understood the scriptures and we really got a grasp of that what's happening in our day and time is according to this book? What would happen if in our mind, in our spirit, we know that what's taking place is what God has predicted is going to come upon this world? And if we know that, we don't have to be afraid of it. We don't have to be worried by it. But we can stand on the solid rock and know I will not be moved because I trust in a risen Lord. I trust in Jesus. I don't have to worry about it. Are there storms? Yes. Are there are things on the horizon? Yes. But they don't dictate my life. My risen Lord does. Oh, hallelujah. I wish you were here. Shout with me a little bit, folks. Get on one time. I'm feeling good right now. I, I, I just believe that with all of my heart. If we truly knew the teachings of the Scripture and we truly understood what the Bible tells us is going to happen, there's no place for fear. But faith would arise and say, what I see, I see the hand of God. What I see is the Bible coming to pass. What I see is Jesus walking on the water, bringing about the plan of God and the plan of salvation. If only my trust were there. But he says to them, I'm here. He said, don't be afraid. But I want you to notice what else he says to them. He says, go. Go. Jesus, in the midst of the confusion, he says, go. What was he saying? You know what he's saying to them? I believe he's saying, anyway. He's saying, you know what? I don't want you in this place of mourning any longer. I, I, I don't want you in this place of sorrow anymore. Jesus said, I didn't die so you could be sorrowful. I didn't die so that you can mourn. I didn't die so that you can have a pity party. He says, he gives them a command. He says, go. What does he say? It's time to get up and it's time to move forward. And I want to say sometimes in our lives, fear has gripped us long enough. Fear has held us back long enough. Fear has had his bondage over us long enough. And what the Holy Spirit here is saying, he said, go. In other words, Jesus is saying, get up and start moving forward. Get up and start doing what I'm telling you to do. Because you see, in the midst of confusion and chaos, the Spirit of God always gives his people guidance and direction. He doesn't lead us wandering amok someplace. He doesn't leave us wandering around someplace place, but rather he gives to us that divine direction that says for my people, it's time to get up, it's time to get moving, it's time to start singing, it's time to start praying, it's time to start rejoicing, it's time to start doing what I put in your heart to do for me. There's no stopping. We can't allow chaos. We can't allow confusion to stop us because the risen Lord says, I am, a, I am alive, I am well, I am with you. And he's saying to these ladies here, stop what you're doing. Enough tears, enough mourning, enough sorrow, enough panic, enough doubt, enough fear, enough of it all. He says, go. Huh? And I just wonder today in our spiritual lives and our spiritual beings, what is God saying to us? What is God saying to us? I don't believe for a moment God is saying we're to hide in a corner and be afraid. He's saying to us, it's time for us to be about our Father's business. It's time for us to start doing what God wants us to do. And you notice what he says. He said, go and tell my brothers. Go and tell my brothers. In other words, they had heard.
And I tell you, he is alive. I tell you that he's working, that he's moving. But the message here Jesus was trying to say to them was, it's time for you to get up. Put the morning aside. Let's go tell somebody. Let's share it with somebody. And I know in our states we have social distancing. And I know that more than 10 people in Virginia and more than 5 people in West Virginia can't be together. But folks, that doesn't stop the telephone. That doesn't stop the Facebook. That doesn't stop sending a letter. That doesn't stop giving a phone call. We can still reach out to people, and we can still share with them that Jesus is alive and well. The gospel will not be stopped. The gospel cannot be stopped. And you and I, as God's people, have got to spread the word. Jesus alive and well. Praise the Lord. So I encourage you today. He said, go tell my brothers. I encourage you today. Find five people that you can call and tell them Jesus is alive. Tell them Jesus is alive. So they're going to say, how do you know? Because I've seen Jesus. I've seen him work in my heart. I've seen him work in my life. He's given but me guidance many times because he is a good shepherd. He is our shepherd. And he is our God. He leads us beside still water. He leads us where we need to go. He is the one that says in the midst of chaos... I've got a word for you. Follow me. He gives us guidance. He gives us that, that strength that we need. But not only that, in the midst of the confusion, he gives us something else. So he says, go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and they're what? They're going to see me. What do you think, for those of you who watch me, I usually walk up and down the aisles, and this is tough for me not to do that. But... Um, I was thinking this morning, you know, there's five or six people here. I used to pastor church. That's all I ever had. So I'm, I'm used to preaching five or six. That's okay. But, but, but here Jesus said, go tell my brethren to go to Galilee. And there they're going to do what? See me. What do you think? Have, have, you know, you've, had, you've heard people say sometimes when a loved one passes away and someone dies. And I say, and, and I've seen it on Facebook. If I could just talk to my mom one more time, if I could just talk to my loved one one more time, if I could just talk to my friend one more time, don't you think that maybe in these disciples' hearts and mind was that same thing? If I could just talk to Jesus one more time, if I could just have communion with him one more time, if I could just see him break bread one more time, if only I could see that one more miracle, Man, my life would be complete. Huh? See, what they didn't know was Jesus was sending a messenger to them and said, go to Galilee and you're going to see me. Notice all their hope had been gone. All their faith had, 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 had taken a hit. But here Jesus says to them, go and you're going to see me. I like that. Go tell my disciples... Go to Galilee, there you're going to see me. Praise the Lord. See, they went from uncertainty to certainty. Before Jesus, their future looked bleak. Now it looks good. Okay, once again, can you imagine being Peter? And the ladies go to Peter, Peter, I got a message for you. Peter, I want to tell you something. Jesus said, go to Galilee, you're going to see him. What do you think that did to Peter? What do you think that did to John? What do you think it did to some of the other one? That all of a sudden there's from uncertainty and, 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 and feeling like all is lost. And now all of a sudden there comes a message, go to Galilee and you're going to see Jesus. Huh? Now I don't know about you, there, there may be some that would have taken a turkey trot. But I can only imagine knowing Peter, he ran every step of the way. He, he, he wanted to get where Jesus was. Because you see, all of a sudden, his hope has been renewed. All of a sudden, the future looks brighter. All of a sudden, there's a new peace within him. 
All of a sudden, the Bible said they were overjoyed because they saw Jesus. And all of a sudden, the very situation that looked bleak and looked hopeless and looked dim, all of a sudden, by the words of Jesus and the resurrection, everything is now turned upside down. And all of a sudden, there's a word going through Jerusalem, Jesus is alive, let's go see him. Jesus is alive, let's go see him. Jesus is alive, there's hope for us. Jesus is alive, he can turn the night into the day. Jesus is alive. And I can only imagine there that as they were going, what a difference that had to make in their step. What a difference that had to make in their heart. It's like when you're looking forward to something. There's some people that can't wait to get a stimulus check. But I want to tell you, this is greater than a stimulus check. This is the presence of a living God. And Jesus is saying, listen, if you go where I tell you to go, you're going to see me. If you do what I tell you to do, I'm going to reveal myself. I'm going to manifest myself to you. Jesus said, if you go, I'm going to show up and you're going to see me. The one that you thought was dead, you're going to see that he's now alive. I like that. In the midst of the confusion, Jesus gives them hope. If you go into, when they saw Jesus, they were overjoyed. How many in your life, when Jesus shows up, you're overjoyed? Not only that, when Jesus shows up in a room with them, he says, peace. Peace. Because you see, in the midst of the confusion, Jesus brings peace. Also there, if you read it, he breathes on them to receive the Holy Spirit. He was saying to them, the Comforter's coming. I'm, I've got to go, but somebody's coming to walk alongside you. You're not going to be alone. And he also sends them out to do the work of God. But everything, everything changed when Jesus showed up on the scene. Yes. Hallelujah. I, 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 I don't know if we can comprehend in our mind the difference. Saturday night, oh, they tell me Jesus wasn't crucified on Friday, anyway. But anyway, on Saturday night, we'll use that. Anyway, everything was hopeless. Everything was dark. Everybody was in mourning. Everybody was in misery. Everybody was in sorrow. Then the power of God raised Jesus from the dead. The angels proclaim it. Jesus proclaims it. And now all of a sudden, everything is changed from what was dark to what is hopeful, to what's impossible to now what's possible, to what people thought was an ugly scene becomes God's work to save mankind from their sins. And what a beautiful difference that we see, all because Jesus showed up. Huh? How many times in our lives is the same true. Sometimes we, we go through the hard places. And sometimes we go through difficult times. And sometimes we forget about Jesus. And all looks hope. All looks hopeless. It all looks helpless. But all of a sudden, in the midst of the confusion, Jesus says, here am I. He may send a friend. He may send a Bible verse. You may listen to a sermon somewhere. But all of a sudden, Jesus speaks to your heart. And all of a sudden, the gloom is lifted. Because in the midst of it all, what Jesus does is he assures us of his presence. He removes the fear. He gives guidance. And he gives hope. And friend, I don't know about you today, but as I see the world today, if there's anything we need, we need those same things. We need his presence. We need the removal of fear. We need his guidance. And we need hope. But a hope that is built on something steadfast, secure, and safe. And the only thing that I know that Mitch fits that bill is the word of Almighty God. God's word is the only thing that will give us hope. God's word is the only thing that will help us to stand strong in the midst of what's happening. I don't know where we're headed in this world. I don't know where we're headed in this nation. But I know one thing. My future is in the hands of God. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because he lives, everything's going to be okay. Because of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Musicians, as we come, let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, today, we thank you for the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you today that Jesus didn't stay in the tomb, but the power of God brought him up out of that place. And today the Word of God tells us that he's sitting at the right hand of God the Father, where he ever lives to make intercession for us. And Lord, in those prayers that he's praying for us, he's praying for the same thing that he said to the disciples even here. Don't be afraid, I'm with you. Have hope, have strength, have peace, have joy. Let me work in your heart, let me work in your life. And Lord, today I just pray for those who may be listening. Father, whatever they're going through, whatever they're facing today, Father, in the name of Jesus right now, take away fear, take away loneliness, take away doubt, take away despondency, Lord, take away depression, and Lord, in its place, let them see the resurrected Lord right there in the midst of their battle, right there in the midst of their storm, let them see Jesus standing with them. And Lord, let them turn their hope back to you so that their hearts and lives can be overjoyed with a reason and a purpose to live for Jesus Christ. Lord, today I pray, just minister to every heart, minister to every life at the sound of my voice, I pray in Jesus' name. If you will, this morning before we close, I've asked Brother Ralph and the um, worship team here, I want us to sing that chorus or that, that hymn together because he lives. And I want to remind you today that promise is still true. Because Jesus lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, everything's going to be all right. And our prayer is for you that God will minister to you, that God will bless you, God will be with you. If you have any needs, call us, text us, let us know. We'll be praying for you. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. I can face tomorrow.